Hello everyone. We are talking about salt today. Salt, as you know, is all around us, underground and on the earth's surface in the dried up residues of ancient seas. It is used in foods. We use it in our drinks. We cannot imagine our dishes without it. Today, we have Dr. Shaila to enlighten us on its use and possibly throw light on the good and bad of it. Welcome, Dr. Shaila. Glad you can make time for the podcast today. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for introducing me. I'm glad to be here. Let's talk about the salt today. Dr. Shaila, first, I would like to know what is refined and what is unrefined salt? Because you recommend unrefined salt in all your recipes. All living things utilize salt as essential ingredient for life. Without salt, life itself would not be possible. Unrefined salt has not been altered by men. It contains more than 80 trace minerals and other elements that are essential for the body. In refined salt, most minerals are removed until it is pure sodium chloride. It is treated with several harsh chemicals such as you know, sodium ferrocyanide, aluminum silicate. These chemicals are added to make it free flowing. And some stabilizers are also used to keep that iodine that is fortified to stay in the salt. And salt is bleached. It's essentially lifeless. It's a devitalized product. So many chemicals. So, so why is salt refined when it is not good for you? Yeah, excellent question, Soma. Its refining process gives much longer shelf life than unrefined salt. And customers like it because it's free flowing, so you can put it in the salt shakes. And it looks pure white in color, so people love it. And they don't know what is going into that salt to make it look white and free flowing. Not only salt, even other refined products such as sugar, refined flour, refined oil, they all lack uh, minerals and they stay on shelves much longer periods than unrefined products. Okay, then why exactly is refined salt not good for you and why it should replace unrefined salt? Unrefined salt is made uh, from ocean water. They channel this ocean water through a series of clay ponds and it's uh, evaporated by sun and wind naturally. So it is little grayish in color because no chemicals are used to bleach it. And this unrefined salt contains about 33% sodium, 51% chloride, and 1.8% minerals and trace elements, which is really important for our body to have these trace elements. And it has got moisture in it, like 4.3% moisture. That's why it won't last for that long like uh, refined salt. Rich in magnesium and potassium, and these are the two important minerals that many people are deficient. Then how do you get iodine if unrefined salt is used? Yes, that is a, again another excellent question. Refined salt is fortified with iodine. That is an insufficient amount for body's iodine needs. For the sake of getting iodine into your body, you don't want to eat salt that contains all these chemicals. That's the first point. And when you take unrefined salt, it contains not just iodine, it has got many other essential things, trace elements, moisture, and it's mainly natural thing. So that's what you want. To get iodine, you need to eat food rich in iodine, like, you know, seaweed, seafood, and some dark greens contain iodine, and even unrefined salt by itself has iodine. So that should not be the reason why we should be eating the refined salt. Would you uh, say that um, we should restrict uh, ourselves on using unrefined sea salt that you're recommending? Sodium chloride, which is in the salt, is absolutely essential for life. It's essential for brain and the conduction of the nerve impulses. How much we need this is something we should know. It is unhealthy if taken excess because it pulls the water into the bloodstream and increases the blood pressure and puts stress on your kidneys. We have studies showing that eating more salt increases the blood pressure, but most of the salt we get is coming from eating processed food. Actually, that's where we need to restrict our salt intake. You, first of all, will not be able to eat too much of the unrefined salt because it's very salty. So even if you put a little bit of salt, that's enough. Refined salt, the bad salt, you have to put a lot to give the salty taste. Okay. So what we need to do is avoid the processed food 
that contains refined salt. When the food is processed, the salt is added to it. So uh, Celtic salt comes in coarse and fine variety. Does it make a difference as to which one we use? Not really. Actually, I prefer to use coarse salt because it has got more uh, moisture to it. I use this for cooking, and if I want to sprinkle on the food, I just grind and keep a little bit of the Celtic salt in batches just for sprinkling salt on the food. Okay, Dr. Shala, uh, we have heard that uh, we use kosher salt for baking. What is kosher salt and would you recommend this for baking? Kosher salt uh, dissolves faster and its flavors spread very quickly. It contains fewer additives. It is actually refined salt, but it doesn't have that many chemicals like other iodized salts. It's a flaky salt, so named for its use in the preparation of meat according to the requirements of uh, Jewish dietary guidelines. It is perfect to cure meat, which is a step in coarsening process. This can come from earth or sea. It is important to know that all kosher salt is not coming from sea. Okay. Yes, uh, all salts not coming from sea. So we also have Himalayan salt. Uh, what would you say about that, uh, Himalayan salt? Some salt that come from earth or volcanic rock as in Himalayan salt contains iron oxide. That's why it is pinkish uh, in color. So actually Himalayan salt is fine as long as it's not uh, refined. So you would recommend Himalayan salt uh, while cooking? It is not as good as the Celtic sea salt and other unrefined salts, but it is better than the refined salts. Okay, so what other salts you recommend other than uh, Celtic salt? There are many brands out there because I'm not quite familiar with a lot of other brands, but the ones that I know are uh, Redmond salt. That's another uh, good uh, unrefined salt. Fluoride diesel, few other salts uh, like France sea salt and gray salt, Sicilian sea salt. Uh, these are all some good brands of unrefined salts. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, we've also heard about uh, rock salt. Is it a good sea salt? There are many kinds of rock salts. Depends on the purification process. Uh, some rock salts may have impurities if they're not processed under good conditions. I don't know which rock salts are good, but it all depends on the purification process. Okay. So what is black salt or kala namak, uh, as we call it in India? Is this good? Kala namak is uh, unrefined salt in India. But it has got some spices in it. It has got amla added to this. This salt is heated in furnace in very high temperatures, so it doesn't have that much moisture to it. It also contains activated charcoal to give it a unique flavor to it. So it is basically a flavoring salt. So what is the importance of moisture in salt? When there is moisture in salt, it can retain all the trace elements and minerals in it. Salt with moisture is perishable. It will not last on the shelves for too long. That's why it is expensive too. Uh, what about light salt? Would you recommend salt substitutes in our diet? They generally don't have a great flavor. First of all, I don't like uh, the flavor. And light salt uses potassium chloride instead of sodium. Typically, only people who have a medical reason use these salts. When you're on certain medications, you got to watch out for the potassium. So if your potassium goes high, that's not good. So you should check with your healthcare provider prior to using any salt substitutes. Okay. Everyone, as you heard, Dr. Shala, it's not just salt in your diet, it's much more than that. Dr. Shala, do you, uh, any final thoughts for our audience? Yes, I would say that uh, you should, first of all, restrict the salt and make sure the salt that you're eating is... Uh, unrefined salt and whatever unrefined salt is available in your area you should eat it and remember salt is uh, in limits is good for uh, your adrenal glands you do need salt in limits you can't completely restrict the salt so I cannot give any, any universal recommendations on this you have to go by what your medical conditions what your medications and finally you should have a conversation with your healthcare provider to see how much salt you need in your diet. But my recommendation is to go with undefined salt, limited amounts, not too much of undefined salt. And don't worry about iodine. To get more iodine, just eat the food that contains iodine. Undefined salt contains a lot of other minerals. So thanks, ma'am, for talking to us today. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Thank you, everyone. Feel free to suggest few topics for podcast sessions on Dr. Shala's website. The address is drsaila.com, drshala.com. Thank you. Have a good day.